68 degrees. Good weather for some softball out here. Overcast in Bloomington. First pitch on the way. Fouled back right off the bat of Avery Steiner kicking things off. Definitely important for Indiana to get out to a good start today. Kind of silence Illinois. Maybe take the lead again and then have your pitching try and hold on to what was a three-run lead yesterday. But got to be careful here, even at the top of the lineup. Yep. Steiner, a lefty slapper. And she takes that two-step approach. Getting some momentum going forward. Fouls the first two off. She's down in the count right now for an 0-2 count. The leadoff hitter for the fighting lineup. It's certainly important for Ford to take advantage of being up 0-2 in the count. Maybe get the swing and miss here, but... Certainly tough with a slapper up there when her only goal is to make contact. Four pitch coming through just off the plate to the left side away from Steiner. Steiner playing second base. Playing in 47 games, starting all of them this year. This, this Illini lineup is full of experience. Without question, 367 for Steiner right at the top. Good take there. Now on the one, two. Four just goes to that same spot away from Steiner. Evening up the count at 2-2. Yesterday she went one for four. 2-2 two -two on the way, the wind up, exact same spot. Natalie Four pounding that spot, trying to catch that left side of the plate. Full count now. Everything you want to see from your leadoff hitter fought. Falls down in the count 0-2, works her way all the way back to make it full. And we saw this yesterday with this experience lineup, the patience really paying off. The payoff pitch, this one, that will drop for a base hit in shallow left down the third base line. A leadoff single for Avery Steiner. And what an at-bat it was. We mentioned going down early in the count, but, was, but never wavered and able to make solid contact there. Able to keep it foul down the left field line and... An early base hit for Illinois. And next up, Stevie Mead, a freshman. There's, as we've been talking about already, a theme forming here in our broadcast, the balance between experience and newcomers. So we'll go over that a little bit more when we take a look at the full lineup. Stevie Mead pulls away from a bunt, and at first, Steiner will pull back to her spot. It goes Steiner, Mead, Megan Ward, Kelly Riono, Delaney Rummel, Kaylee Powell, Bella Loya, Danielle Davis, and Jalen Vickery. 1-0 to Stevie Mead on the way. Kind of teases a bunt again, but the pitch is outside the zone once more. Riding up high, 2-0. And Illinois has that mix of upper and underclassmen in their lineup, even at the top here. Steiner, a senior, and now Mead, a freshman. The 2-0, this time a bunt laid down, slowly rolling forward, and the throw over to first in time. The sacrifice bunt laid down to advance Steiner, so a runner in scoring position to kick things off for the fighting Illini. That was a really great play by Warwick there. It's a play the catcher needs to make, and sometimes the pitchers will have that instinct to go after that bunt attempt, but that was the catcher's ball, and Warwick took care of it. Warwick, a talented transfer from Mizzou, Coming into this Indiana program, the transfer portal, portal really treated the Indiana Hoosiers well. Getting Cora Bassett from Purdue also. First pitch to Megan Ward, a swing and a miss. Again, a little bit more on Lindsey Warwick, just a steady presence behind the plate for Indiana. Megan Ward, a sophomore. Playing shortstop today. The 0-1 just rides a little bit high to even up the count at 1-1. One, one. one down here in the top of the first. Avery Steiner standing on at second. More of a kneel right now down in her runner stance. The 1-1 one, one to Ward. Choked up on, she held off. 2-1. Nice crowd here at Andy Moore today, again for Senior Day. A few youth softball teams coming in to watch the Hoosiers play as well. And some Illinois fans down right towards their dugout down the third baseline. The 2-1, that'll get a piece of Megan Ward. And the Illini will have two runners on with just one out here in the top of the first inning. And really not something we see very often from this Indiana pitching staff. Only the 23rd batter that they've hit, and this will get the Illini on the base paths early. So the Illini threatening early on with one runner in scoring position, another right behind at first. That'll bring up Kelly Riono. 
She did a lot of the damage yesterday. Three RBIs for Riono. That's exactly right. The first pitch Riono sees foul back into the netting. And it covers the stands here at Andy Moore, protects them from any foul balls that may come their way. One count for Riono at the plate. Four in the windup. And that one will come away from Riono. One one count now, one down, two runners on the bases at first and second. The one one, uh, it's just a little bit high again, two one. Now, Zach, it, just kind of starting off, the pitches have been close to the zone. Nothing's missed badly, but it's just been on that left side of the plate and the top side that's just missed barely. The 2-1 swing and a miss there to even up the count at 2-2. That's only the second swing and miss that we've seen. I think you need to chalk it up to what Steiner, Mead, and Ward were able to do just in terms of being patient at the plate, waiting for the pitch's movement to move off the plate and be taken for balls. So Riono in a 2-2 count here. 2-2, fouled back. Keep going. Yeah, she made contact, but at the same time, we've only seen a few swings in each at-bat, uh, and in the first couple, we only actually saw two, so. Chance to put the Illini up here early. Count all even at 2-2. Natalie Ford trying to get out of the jam. This one popped up again. It'll roll off the netting behind the plate, and back into the glove of Lindsey Warwick. She'll give to her senior pitcher, and get set once more for another 2-2 pitch. And as much as four is in a bit of a jam here, of course, with early traffic and only one out, a chance for her to build some confidence if she's able to keep the inning scoreless. 2-2, two, two, that one just missing high once again. We've talked about that, how it's just missed barely, and that's where, you know, maybe Natalie Four can use some of that experience and just kind of bring it a little bit back down. And those will be strikes if she can adjust later in the game. The payoff pitch hit hard to center field. That one will drop, bouncing off the back wall. One will score. Number two coming around. The throw is cut off, though, by Brianna Copeland. So two runs score here at the top of the first. You mentioned, Zach, three RBIs from Riono yesterday. She gets started early on with a two RBI double in the top of the first with just one out. Continues to have her way in this series, just takes this one to right center all the way in the gap, almost rode it out of here, but the fence keeps it in the ballpark and it's an early two nothing lead for Illinois and it was an excellent at bat and a great piece of hitting by the right fielder, Riona. Yeah, and these Illini batters have taken things the distance for a lot of them. Got some fighting to do here, especially with Riono on at second, 11 stolen bases. She is going to be back there, I would imagine, toying with the mind of Lindsey Warwick behind the plate as pitch one to Rummel comes across the strike. And that's the first called strike that we've seen. So we mentioned Illinois' patience, now four able to paint the plate and get a called strike. Oh, one popped up into the netting down the first baseline right in front of the Indiana dugout. Oh, two hole for Delaney Rummel. Four, trying to collect yourself there in the circle. 0-2, oh, one down, top the first. This one line straight to Juvia Davis in the right side of the infield. Throw over to first in time, runner will advance to third. So yet another run for Illinois just 60 feet away. They already lead Indiana 2-0 here in the top of the first. And next up to bat, Kaylee Powell will try and bring Riono home. Meanwhile, for the Indiana side, they'd love to just get out of this. Strand one, take what you can get, and head into the bottom of the first, get your offense going. First pitch to Powell down low for a ball. We were able to see four gets, uh, excuse me, get Rummel there with the 4-3 ground out when she was ahead 0-2 in the count previously against Steiner. She gave up a single after being ahead 0-2. The 1-0. Right over the plate for a strike, 1-1. One, one. Again, it's a good pitch, and you got to deal with Powell here. No slouch. A very patient hitter. Leads the team in walks with 17. 
Count even up at 1-1. Powell takes that chop warm-up motion and awaits the 1-1. Away from Powell for a ball. Talk to Natalie for this week just a little bit about her style of pitching. You know, earlier this week she had a career day. More on that later. But she doesn't see herself or didn't before this as a strikeout pitcher. She pitches for contact. Weak contact there earlier from Rummel. The 2-1. Fouled back into the netting. And that's where we see that contact pitching play out with Rummel grounding out straight to the right side of the infield. But, you know, she's got strikeout potential as well in the circle for the Hoosiers with a 2-2 count against Powell. And there's nothing wrong with pitching to contact because that means that you're going to get in the ahead in the count early if you're able to get weak contact like she's seen here with Powell. The 2-2 popped up once again. That'll go over the netting and bounce on the concrete concourse here at Andy Moore behind all the bleachers. It's red seat backs here around the home plate and then once you get down on the first and third base lines metal bleachers we're a mostly full Andy Moore here today Powell with a 2-2 count after fouling a few off pitch comes in away from Powell and once again a full count yeah a payoff pitch coming here and you'd hate to walk Powell and uh, continue her trend of getting the base on balls but then you'd have to deal with Bella Loya the catcher so, big pitch here coming for four. The payoff, wind up on the way and swing, and that will land right in the glove of Taylor Minnick in mid-left field, and that will strand one, but not before the Fighting Illini able to bring two home across the plate. We'll head to the bottom of the first. Two-nothing ball game, the Illini up ahead of the home team, the Hoosiers. We'll be right back here for more Big Ten softball on Big Ten Plus. The Fighting Illini put up two in the top of the first. They lead the Hoosiers right now with that score. Getting our first look at the defensive side of things for the Fighting Illini behind the plate. Bella Loya, Kaylee Powell at first, Avery Steiner at second, Megan Ward at shortstop, Delaney Rummel at third. Bassett pops this one up over the head of the media booth here to even up the count at one and one. In the outfield from left to right, in left, Stevie Mead. In center, Jalen Vickery. And in right, Kelly Riono. In the circle for the Fighting Illini, Tori McQueen. The 1-1 one, one on the way from McQueen to Bassett. Bassett holds on that. Over the plate for a strike, 1-2. Cora Bassett. Probably the best hitter on this Indiana squad. The 1-2 upstairs, evening up the count at 2-2. Bassett, again, transferring over from Purdue before this season. Hoosier's very happy to have her on this roster. I'll say. I, I, she's just been incredible this season. One of the best players in the Big Ten and just so fun to watch right at the top of the lineup. 2-2, foul back into the netting once again by Bassett. Again, with a 433 batting average, that's good enough for first in the Big Ten. It's just insane. It's really hard to find an offensive statistic that she's not at least top three in the conference in. Yep. The 2-2 to Bassett from McQueen on the way. Bassett, looks like that may have just gotten a piece. Check swing that hit the bat. Yeah. But no, I, and she's such a threat right at the top of this lineup, and she sets the tone for everyone else that's coming up after her, especially if she's leading off an inning like we're seeing here in the home half of the first. The 2-2, Bassett swings on this and fouls it down the third base line. As you mentioned, tough to find an offensive statistic where she's not in the top 10 at least. Let's yeah. go down the list. First in batting average, second in slugging, second in on-base percentage, first in on-base plus slugging. First in runs scored, third in hits, first in doubles, fifth in home runs, eighth in walks, ninth in stolen bases. Packing the stats, Cora Bassett. The 2-2 swung on and missed there by Cora Bassett. She strikes out 
to start things off for Indiana on the offensive side right. of things. McCoy. Coming off of a one hitter, complete game that she pitched in her last start. So she's excellent in her 24th appearance and Indiana's gonna wanna have lengthy at bats against her so you can try and see if you can get her out of the game a little bit early. Up and down this pitching staff, it's strikeout pitching. It this is. pitching staff broke the single season record in strikeouts as Minnick lines this one straight to first base. Bobbled for a moment by Powell at first, but then she collects it and gets out number two. The record for the Illini was set back in 2001 with, with two down in the bottom of the first. Ford waits on the first pitch from McQueen, 1-0 count. Brittany Ford, talk about improvement, going from spending most of her career as a pinch hitter, now squarely in the lineup as the DP all season. The 1-0, 2-4, big swing there. Ford, a power hitter. Just misses that ball, 1-1, one, one, two down in the bottom of the first. That's been one of the biggest changes in her game is just the ability to slug the ball second on the, excuse me, third on the team and slugging at 623. Just able to put the ball in the air and have it travel a little bit further. The 1-1 one, one inside for a ball. 2-1 now, two down. The Illini leading the Hoosiers 2-0. And nobody's going to be surprised if Ford comes out and has a day on senior weekend. Oh, yeah. 2-1. Ford waits on that. Strike call to even up the count at 2-2. Two -two. And Indiana's offense has held their own. Close to a 300 average. They get about five and a half runs a game with their 25 and 18 record. The 2-2 two -two on the way. Ford pops this one up. That will drift way out of play and foul back behind the plate. Count will stay at 2-2 two -two with two down. A little bit of wind in and out here down according to the flags at center. Our measuring stick there. Blowing from right to left. But it's died down every now and then. The 2-2 two -two to four. This one swung on straight to the right side. The throw over to first. Plenty of time. And that will finish things off. Three up, three down here in the bottom of the first. McQueen and her fighting Illini defense get the job done quick and they'll be right back on offense already leading 2-0 on Big Ten Plus. Welcome back in here to Bloomington, Indiana. Andy Moorefield on senior day for the Indiana Hoosiers. Our Gwen Parks is down on the sidelines with one of the seniors' parents at third, Grayson Radcliffe. Her parents are with Gwen Parks down in the seats right now. Thanks guys, well, as you said, yes, I'm with Grayson Radcliffe's parents, Chad and Beth. How did it feel to go down on the field and watch her final senior recognition? Oh wow, it was an awesome moment. I wish we had more of them, but we don't, but super proud of the whole team and uh, especially of Grayson. When did you guys know she had a serious talent and passion for the sport? You know, I think Grayson just picked up the game when she was early, really loved the competitive spirit of it. Um, you know, being in an environment like this in Indiana where you get to play in the Big Ten is every kid's dream. And you know, it was her to the early on, and she got to live it out. She is such a positive leader on and off the field here at Indiana. What do you admire most about the person she's become here? Um, honestly, I mean, there's so many things that uh, she's grown in the game, but the, the game is bigger than just one person. And so I think that is probably what I'm most proud of, that she's given back to the community. She's a team player. and. Uh, I think it shows on the field how she leads. Well, thank you guys so much. Enjoy watching the rest of the game. Enjoy. Back to you guys. Thank you. Thanks for that, Gwen. Proud moments on both sides for parents of these student athletes in the game. Great to see them and all their achievements on the field. While we were taking a chat to Grayson Radcliffe's parents, we had a triple there from Bella Loya. She tripled off the wall to center field. She stands at third right now, right next to Grayson Radcliffe. 0-1 count for Daniel Davis at the plate. 
And now the count 1-1 for Davis. Already the Illini a 2-0 lead with nobody out here in the top of the second. Yeah, certainly in prime position with a runner just 60 feet away and try and make this a three-run ball game here early. And Four's got to deal with Davis, the team leader in average slugging on base percentage. And like I mentioned, she's hitting eighth. So you just you don't expect it, the bottom of the lineup, to be that much of a threat to bring in runners. But that's exactly what Davis has done this entire year. She gets on base, she hits the ball hard. And now with Loya getting on, as the 2-1 on the way popped up foul out of play, with Loya tripling to center field, the lineup card likely to turn over here. Yep. And that's a big threat to Indiana and their pitching staff and defense as Avery Steiner started the game off with a hit. The 2-2 to Davis just off the outside edge of the plate. And just to go back to the triple hit by Loya, it was such a tough ball to really track for for Andrews out in center field. We have mentioned a little bit of wind that could have played with it, but uh, she ran all the way into the wall and it was down for extra bases. Danielle Davis checks her swing. Pitch not in the zone. take first runners on the corners nobody out and the ninth slot coming in to bat for the fighting Illini Jalen Vickery coming in to face off against Natalie for perhaps a situation where you send the delayed steal at first to bring the runner at third home maybe that's what Lindsay Warwick took a few steps out of the box behind the plate to relay to the defense we'll see what the fighting Illini draw up right here Jalen Vickery in the box a bunt popped up straight to Natalie Four, puts it in her glove, coming out of the circle, one down. That one just stayed a little bit up on Vickery. Yeah, that, that's the danger of doing that there. Of course, with, with no outs prior to that bunt attempt, you're not really doing yourself too much damage here, but this is where Four, as a pitcher that pitches to contact, can benefit here, and you're gonna try and have your infield help you out here and try to get a double play, and the inning. Avery Steiner. Turning the card over. First pitch to her, a ball. And Steiner really with, again, hitting lefty and being a slapper style hitter. Someone who can pull the ball to the left side of the field and potentially bring the runner at third home, Loya. Steiner, 61 hits, second in the Big Ten. She pulls this one foul right over to that left side of the field. One, one count, one out here. Again, runners on the corners. Loya with three stolen bases, Davis with three at first. Davis gets down in her stance at the first base bag. Loya awaiting, trying to find a window to get home. One, one to Steiner at the plate. That one over for a strike, one, two. You alluded to it though, Max, that her ability to pull the ball to right is the reason why the right side of the infield for Indiana is playing that way with Davis and Copeland not allowing for there to be too much of a gap between the two of them and there's a much bigger gap between shortstop and second base for her to unlikely but still possible pull the ball straight up sec second base. Yep, the one two is reached on and fouled back by Steiner. Exactly right with her style of hitting. She has the ability to really kind of control depending on where the contact comes in on the barrel, control which side she can send it to. The one two on the way from four. Line straight over to third in the glove of Grayson Radcliffe. Loya just barely steps back on third, avoiding the double play. Two down now, runner still on the corners. Two very, uh, let's call it opportune fly balls for the Hoosiers. Yeah, Indiana catching some breaks, but it, at the same time, it's excellent fielding for Radcliffe there. I mean, we just talked to her parents about uh, Gwen did, about when did she have when, was, when could they see she had quite a talent for softball? And the love for the game's always been there, but it's those reflexes that she's gained over time with the glove, the ability to catch that line drive, and almost had a chance for a double play if Loya was a little bit more off of third base. And Radcliffe plays with such a big heart as the 0-1 to Meade. Once again, catches the right edge of the plate for a strike. Radcliffe earlier in the year on the trip to Oklahoma for Indiana. She injured her right leg. That's where you see that brace 
on her right leg as the 0-2 on the way from four. That one just off that right edge for a ball. 1-2, both runners come back safely to their bags. Radcliffe had to stay out some time but worked so hard and that's where you see that competitive fire that these athletes play with to work her way back. The one two to Mead, swung on, popped up foul back into the netting again. It'll stay one and two with two down runners on the corners. And you know that must have been killing her to not play in that Oklahoma game against the number one team in the country. I mean, obviously Indiana came up short in that one, but what a moment it would have been for her in her senior year to play against the number one team in the country. It would have been quite a moment for her, but. Big swing and a miss there from Stevie Mead. The Hoosiers get out of the jam, keep it a two nothing ball game. Strand the runners on the corners of the Fighting Illini. Now into the batter's box. Again, nice interview by Gwen Parks there talking to her parents. Now she steps into the box with her Hoosiers down 2-0 through one and a half. And McQueen for the Fighting Illini had a fantastic bottom of the first inning. Let's see if the lefty can continue throwing that stuff. And right there, draws a big swing and miss from Radcliffe, evening up the count at one and one. Yeah, revved it up there with the fastball. Radcliffe, though, perfectly capable of turning that velocity around and sending one over the scoreboard. Plenty of power hitting clean up here for this Indiana lineup. The one one on the way. Radcliffe gets a piece of that one, drifting to right, and a nice diving grab there in right field by Kelly Riono. Just kind of sliding in, getting under it. It was certainly saved a base hit. What a play by her. Excellent mobility by Kelly Riono in right field. One down here in the bottom of the second. That'll bring up one of the freshmen for this Indiana team, Brianna Copeland. She's got a 0-1 count right now. Big swing at that one. You know, Brianna Copeland never afraid to swing for the fences. We saw it's cooled down a little bit since the beginning of the season, but she was on a tear. She's got eight home runs this season. A lot of those came toward the beginning of the Big Ten slate. She's that's, got an 0-2 count. That's why you see her hunting those high pitches. This one lines straight to first. Just an easy step on the back for Powell, two down. But her ability to hunt for velocity and look for elevated pitches, it's part of the reason, even as a freshman, she's been able to drive the ball uh, out of the yeah. ballpark. And as of late, getting the start in center. Two down, first pitch to Andrews. Big swing and a miss there. Tori McQueen has not stepped off the gas at all no, since it, her work in the bottom of the first. The fastball, the rise ball, it's all working right now. And those pitches look so enticing to the Indiana hitters, but then it's when that ball takes off towards the top of the zone and it just misses your bat. 0-1 on the way. This one an off-speed drifting a little bit up in the zone. Keeping it at 1-1. You know, Zach, I might need your assistance here throughout the broadcast. She's got a really quick fastball. You can't let me, you know, Lightning McQueen pops into the mind. Tori McQueen, a fast fastball. It might happen at some point. So for those folks at home, I apologize if it does. This, this is fouled back by Aaliyah Andrews, making it 1-2. I'm just saying it might happen. I thought you might have something up your sleeve with that. And you know what? It's totally fine, and I'll be looking for it. As much as I'll help you, I also want to encourage you to have fun on this wonderful Saturday. Thank you, I appreciate that. Anytime. The gears are turning, I'll assure you that. The one two on the way from McQueen to Andrews swung on foul back once again. The count will stay one two. Tori McQueen working so far. She's got one strikeout but drawing some nice weak contact and pop ups to get herself cleanly through one and two thirds. She's got a one two count on Aaliyah Andrews, the sophomore center fielder for Indiana right now. Andrews waits on that one, just above the zone. It was a great take too, and it was elevated, looked to be a little bit off speed, but that's what Andrews had been swinging with, either swinging through or making weak contact. It was a great take by her to even up the count. Just as you said, I'll even at 2-2. Queen trying to finish off the inning. Swing there from Aaliyah Andrews, and that will drop in deep center field. 
And a stand-up double for Aaliyah Andrews. And you know what, Zach? This is a really strong two-out hitting team. Indiana has shown the ability to rally with two outs, as you mentioned. And it'll be a tough task with McQueen on the mound. But they finally have broken through now. They, you know, gotten some contact off her pretty strong. And, and now maybe that can open up things. Oh, well, one Warwick takes the first pitch for a strike. Andrews... Speedy on the bases, stands at second. 0-1 on the way from McQueen. This one in the zone once more. 0-2 hole for Lindsey Warwick. Warwick, who's already made some nice fielding plays behind the plate, uh, had one out unassisted in the first as she, I believe, caught that bunt attempt. 0-2, that gets a piece of Warwick's left elbow right there on the Evo Shield guard. Okay. And and drive in some runs here. Indiana would love to keep pace early on. 0-2, or excuse me, clean count. Still on the board, it said 0-2. 0-1 for Juvia Davis in the box after the brief pause. Lance McMahon coming in for the Illini to talk things over with Tori McQueen in the circle. And McQueen comes out, pitches a strike. The 0-1 on the way to Davis. Big swing there. 0-2 now with two runners on for Indiana, but two outs already and an 0-2 hole for Davis at the plate. You were a little ahead of yourself, but you, in a way, predicted the future here with, with the 0-2 count, so I want to give you props for that. Thank you. Sometimes, man, sometimes. The 0-2 on the way from Tory McQueen. Swung on there, popped up high in the air, right in the infield, though, and under it is Powell there at first to finish off the bottom of the second, the Fighting Illini, strand two to keep it a two nothing ball game, heading into the top of the third on Big 10 Plus. Ward swings on the first pitch, straight to short, and the throw over to first. Plenty of time, that was quick. Welcome back in, Max Rezik Tewinkle alongside Zach Eberheim and Gwen Parks down on the sidelines helping us out today. Megan Ward swings at the first pitch, lines it straight to Brooke Benson standing there at short, quick reflexes, throws it over to first. One down already here in the top of the third, fighting Illini with a two nothing lead over the Hoosiers. Kelly Riono swings at the first one there, just bounces off the shortstop. It'll be a single for Kelly Riono. Riono two for two already today, and two first pitch swings from the Fighting Illini here in the top of the third. She's just seeing the ball so well right now. She had the game-winning RBIs yesterday in the eight-inning victory for Illinois. Already a two RBI double responsible for Illinois' lead, and now a base hit, sharply hit to Benson. Nothing you can do with that except for keep it out of the outfield. And this one will drop in right center. Runners on the corners once again, Delaney Rummel knocking this one down on the green outside there in the outfield. And runners on the corners for the Fighting Illini. Yeah, they've really got them cornered right now. Still nobody out, and it's interesting because this was the exact same situation that Four faced yeah. in the second with Loya's leadoff triple and then a walk of Davis. But, I mean, I don't, we really had to give her props for getting three straight outs. Obviously, her infield helped her. Brianna Copeland coming into the circle. Grace Lorsung coming in at first. Runner goes at first, and the throw a little bit high there from Warwick, so a stolen bag for Rummel will open up first. Another switch happening in the outfield, Kinsey Mitchell entering the game at right. And Cora Bassett coming down to where she's played a majority of the season at second base. 104, Kaylee Powell at the plate with two runners in scoring position and a two nothing lead, big swing there from Powell, evening up the count at one and one. Brianna Copeland again, as you were talking about, Zach, a freshman pitcher for Indiana, has gotten, as of late, more of her work in the infield compared to the beginning of the season when she started a lot of games in the circle. The one one over the plate for a strike, one two. Such a great moment here, even on senior day, we can actually see uh, her mother sitting right behind home plate cheering her on and this is a big spot for Copeland trying to induce a strikeout 
and limit the damage here. If Indiana can keep it scoreless again with runners at the corners and nobody out, that'll be a heck of an accomplishment. The one, two, and Brianna Copeland gets the K. Two down now with runners on second and third. You're exactly Now right. having to get through Loya, who tripled her last time up. First pitch down low to Loya. 1-0. Two down here in the top of the third. Runners at second and third for the Fighting Illini. Up 2-0 on Indiana. 1-0, this one hit hard to left center. Taylor Minix under it, though, for the grab to strand two. Some nice resilience there from Indiana on defense and in the circle to send it straight to the bottom of the third. Down two runs right now. Still a close game, though. We'll be back in a moment for more of this matchup between the Indiana Hoosiers and the Fighting Illini. In the uh, bleachers and the red seat backs, a lot of Indiana fans, but also some youth softball teams here looking on as Indiana and Illinois face off. And you know what? This Indiana team has a program to inspire the next generation. We'll send it down to Gwen Parks with more on that. Thanks, guys. Well, the Indiana softball team participates in a program here called the Little Sister Program, where younger girls are paired with a girl on the team. And as a mentor, friend, and role models. The program provides student athletes to become positive role models on girls in the sports community. By the Indiana Hoosiers, Coach Stan's run that for a while. First pitch to Bassett coming across for a ball. And you know what, it's really great to see both teams like Illinois and Indiana and teams all across college softball really working hard to inspire the next generation and empower girls and women here who want to play softball. The 1-0 upstairs, just a great message and great goal of that program. Yeah, no, it really is. Some of the best things athletes can do is be, even at the college level, be mentors to the younger generations and try to inspire them to do what they're currently doing, doing in Division I and uh, a competitive league like the Big Ten. There goes Brooke Benson trying to grab a stolen base. That will roll on through past the second base bag. So a stolen bag for Brooke Benson, number nine on the year for her, and a runner in scoring position with nobody out in a 2-1 count for Cora Bassett at the plate. Exactly what Indiana wanted here. Benson shows off the speed off the bunt, able to beat out a base hit to... the ash and the 2-1 for Bassett at the plate. Last time McQueen faced Bassett, or the other way around I should say, she actually struck out swinging. Big swing there just as you say that, Zach. As she's hunting a certain pitch and she's looking to drive a ball right now into the gap. Yeah. Well certainly with, with Benson on second, great speed, you mentioned her stolen base total, putting herself in scoring position with nobody out and now Indiana's chance to string some runs together. The 2-2 swung on foul back. Now there's a big gap from the center fielder to left. Right there on that left chunk, that left center chunk of the outfield. It's exactly where Bassett's looking to pull the ball and, yep. and just drive one there. Her ability to get extra bases. 2-2 on the way from McQueen to Bassett. Bassett waits, it's upstairs, full count here. Now Tori McQueen, no walks yet. One strikeout, two hits allowed. Gets into her stance, rests the bat on her shoulders, ready to take the 3-2. The payoff from McQueen, this one popped up. Shallow infield down the first baseline, and down there at first, Kaylee Powell right under it to make the grab. One down here in the bottom of the third. Yeah, not what Bassett was looking for there. Try that one, our bat just absolutely got under it, popped it up, still a tough play over at first base, but now you pass the baton off to Minnick, who still has a runner in scoring position with just one out. Minnick, as we talked about, a talented freshman here. Another one, that pitch just catches the inside of the plate for a strike. A one starting things off for Taylor Minnick. Grounded out to first base her last time up. So was able to make contact, put it on the ground, but directly to a fielder. 
Minnick hits this one straight to the right side of the infield. It advances Benson, but two down now. Benson 60 feet away from getting the first run on the board for Indiana. Uh, certainly the right approach is being taken by her in the circle facing the most dangerous Indiana bats. Big swing there for Brittany Ford, and she may only have one strikeout in McQueen, but again, as you mentioned, that drawing weak contact been really effective so far in retiring these Indiana batters. 0-1 to Ford at the plate with Benson at third. Ford holds up on that, evening up the count at one and one. Completely different outing than what she did her, her last time out. Complete game, one hitter, struck out eight in a position where she's using her fielders much more. And Indiana is able to, has been able to reach base and get at least two hits of, off of her so far, but those have come from the bottom of the lineup. The one, one to Ford swung on hard, but missed. One, two now. Again, nice arsenal of pitches for Tori McQueen. Changing things up, getting some off speed, and then just blowing it by the Indiana batters. Indi one, two count. Indiana's still hunting that rise ball, Max. That's what they've been doing all day so far. The one, two. There it goes upstairs. Evening up the count at two, two. Nothing wrong with wanting to drive the ball here, but again, that, that first run and breaking through would just be so much would do so much for their confidence in that dugout just to get one on the board against McQueen with her sub 2-5 ERA. 2-2. Two, two. On the way to four, that comes away. 3-2. Now full count. You have to wonder, especially with two outs, so often what Indiana does if they get Brittany Ford on, they bring in a pinch runner. But with two outs, you wonder if they sacrifice and burn that runner early on. If they hold on that a little bit. It's full count payoff pitch from McQueen to Ford. Big swing there. And Tori McQueen retires the Indiana batters in strands one. Brooke Benson will just have to trot off third and head to the Indiana dugout. Danielle Davis up to the plate for the Fighting Illini. Her team leads two nothing right now through three. Bree Copeland in the circle. Finish things off in the top of the second inning and draws a swing and miss there from Davis. That's what we've seen from Copeland since she's been inserted into the circle, pitching to the swing and miss and able to induce it. Davis, however, one of the more patient hitters in this Illini lineup. As you can see, her first plate appearance, she walked in what was a very patient, well thought out at bat. Catches a piece of that one. And a check swing that just came up and in, 0-2. And again, that's where we talked about this at the top of the broadcast, the experience of this Illinois roster pays off. 0-2. Danielle Davis checks, didn't go. One, two, the count. Nobody out here as Davis is the leadoff hitter. One, two on the way from Copeland. That one upstairs gets out of the glove of Warwick. Nobody on base though, so no damage done. Count will be two, two. Again, this is a really talented Illinois squad. Up there in the top 30, 35-ish range in RPI. The 2-2 two -two swung on and missed. That's strikeout number two for Brianna Copeland. Get some people on base, but have not looked like the same hitters. And yet another swing and miss there from Jalen Vickery. Just looking a little bit more at the Illinois schedule. They've done a lot of splitting series against some of the best teams in the country. Went one and one as another swing and miss there from Vickery, 0-2. Split the series against LSU, who was at the time in early February ranked 14th. Split the series against number 10, then number 10 ranked Arkansas. Fell 0-2 to number 17, Clemson. Another swing and miss there from Vickery. Back-to-back -back strikeouts for Brianna Copeland. Yeah, she's cooking right now. It's good to see it too because if Illinois was going to continue to put traffic and put stress on these Indiana pitchers, it, it'll only lead to more runs. As good as 
Two out so far here in the top of the fourth. Avery Steiner, the leadoff hitter, takes pitch one for a strike. To continue your thought on Illinois, though, they're peaking at the right time. As much as they have split against those teams that you mentioned, they've been red hot in the month of April, 16 and four, including 10 wins in a row from the third to the 17th. They did not lose. Uh, they've obviously won three in a row coming into today, so peaking at the right time and primed for a rise in the Big Ten standings. Yep, Tyra Perry in her seventh season with Illinois, having her squad catch their stride in the right time of the season. The 1-1 downstairs for a ball, 2-1, two, 2 down here in the top of the fourth. The Illini lead the Hoosiers 2-0. Again, very overcast skies here in Bloomington. And Andy Moore Field today. The rain holding off for now, but the wind picking up. Swung on by Steiner. Kind of reaching for that ball, even off the count of 2-2. Two -two. Yeah, that sun's trying to peek out, Max. We're trying to get a little glimpse of Mr. Blue Sky here on Saturday, but he hasn't made his appearance Ooh, yet. Good song, Zach. Really good song. Good song. Knew you'd appreciate that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Always appreciate a nice rock reference. The 2-2 two -two upstairs on Steiner. Full count, two down here in the top of the fourth. And Copeland has an opportunity to make this a quick inning. The three, two, this one chopped up the middle and Steiner wins the battle there. Now two, four, three on the day. She's on it first. Steiner's just tough to strike out. She really is. Uh, on the season, has only struck out 17 times. And again, her ability to make contact showing it up as she gets a base hit single. Up center field, Copeland, if she was able to induce a swing and miss there, would have struck out the side. It would have really been a momentum turn for Indiana defensively. Now you're faced with going against Meade and almost a great play there by Warwick to try and throw to first with Steiner having a big lead off of first. Yeah, but she came back in safe. Warwick always heads up behind the plate and all it takes for the Indiana catcher is just a quick twitch of the hips. And that ball is launched to wherever she needs it to go. This one popped up, shallow infield. That will finish things off after Steiner gets on. The Hoosier strand one and head to the bottom of the four, still down two nothing. The fighting Illini pitching staff has been strong so far. And here comes Tori McQueen speeding out to the circle. Guys. Thanks for that, Gwen, and she will kick things off once again in the bottom of the fourth. Grayson Radcliffe popping this one up high in the air to shallow left. And getting under it is, I believe that's Megan Ward down there, the shortstop coming over. Just about 10 feet to make the grab. One down here in the bottom of the fourth. Quick swing there from Radcliffe. some power here. But now who we've been seeing in the circle steps into the right-handed batter's box. That's right. Bree Copeland coming into the box after having some nice, two nice straight innings Absolutely. there from Copeland. Very She's clean. in the box with a 1-0 count. First pitch was in the dirt. A 1-0 on the way. That one rising up a little bit high above the zone. 2-0 count now. One down here in the bottom of the fourth. Two zero, ball in the glove of McQueen on the way. Big swing, foul back there by Copeland. Two one, Aaliyah Andrews due up, then Lindsey Warwick right after that. Copeland trotting back into the box and ready for pitch number four. Two one, the count with one down, bottom of the fourth. Wind up on the way from McQueen, held on by Copeland. Three one count. Yeah, went off speed there, and it was a good take by Copeland. You'd think now that she has been in the circle, she's been pitching to these Illini hitters. Yep. Maybe she has a better sense of where pitches are looking and where they might break. 3-1 on the way. Held on by Copeland, and she'll take first. The first walk issued by Tori McQueen so far oh, today. Good. Time for Indiana to try and strike here. First pitch to Andrews upstairs for a ball. 1-0, Copeland on it first. Got five stolen bases on the year, only been caught once. She 
She's coached on there by volunteer assistant coach Gabby Jenkins, the all-time leader in stolen bases in Indiana program history. There goes Copeland to second. She'll slide in safely into scoring position. The pitch at the plate, a strike. Evening up the count at one and one. It's Andrews swung on that. Maybe a little delayed swing to give her teammate Copeland a little bit more time to get a jump on the ball. Now the exact same situation that we saw in the bottom of the third, a runner in scoring position, just one out, and Andrews at the plate. She doubled her last time up. 1-1, popped up and back into the netting. You just feel like it's only a matter of time, but that just speaks to the consistency that McQueen has shown in her ability to silence any run, any momentum Indiana has gathered, and of course still using her fielders who have been excellent on the defensive side for Illinois. 1-2 the count with Copeland on at second. Pitch on the way to Andrews, slaps this one down to the left side. Copeland getting a little bit of a stumble in the dirt. And so she'll get tagged on the base path. Took a few too many stops off second. Andrews safe at first, but now two yeah, down. But you know what, that all starts in the circle with McQueen and her ability to draw that weak contact that yep. we keep mentioning here. Absolutely. Warwick grounded out in her first plate appearance. Big swing there for a strike, 0-1 for her. And again, Lindsey Warwick has also been hit by a pitch. Actually, I believe this is her second appearance. So I think that may have been a little bit off there. Aaliyah Andrews going for second, and she's tagged out. Rarely see that, especially from Andrews. Well, there you go. That will end the inning. Two runners for Indiana caught on the bases. Fighting Illini after putting two up in the top of the first. They kept it that way all the way through four full innings of play here. Two nothing the score. Fighting Illini out ahead of Indiana. Bree Copeland has been strong though in the circle in relief of Natalie Four. Meanwhile, on the other side of things, Tori McQueen strong in the circle, but also her defense, Zach, making play time and again. It's been really impressive. Two pitches away from Ward downstairs. 2-0 the count for her. Head always has to be on a swivel, always be ready to let it go, or even pump fake a throw to make a runner head back to first base or second, or choose not to steal. 2-0, swung on by Ward. 2-1 the count now, yeah, I mean, Bella Loya, talk about composure and experience behind the plate. Mentioned this going to the break for Lindsey Warwick. How about the graduate student in Bella Loya from Mission Viejo, California? It's a good town. Yeah, excellent behind the plate. Lean over the plate for a strike. Yeah, you're a California man yourself. Yeah, Mission Viejo is very pretty, pretty drive through. Can't say I've been there. I've been to <laughs> Legoland though. Oh yeah. I'm surprised you didn't stay there. <laughs> you know, if it was in my power, I would have. Yeah. But I'm glad I'm here broadcasting this lovely game today. 2-2 two -two popped up foul and down on the concourse. Once again here at Andy Moore. Count will stay at 2-2 two -two for Megan Ward. Nobody out here in the top of the fifth. Ward grounded out to the shortstop her last time up in the third. That led off the inning. In the same position here in the fifth with her team still in front, but it's anybody's ball game. Ward holds on that, the count will go full. 3-2, nobody out here in the top of the fifth. Still no sun here, just a clean blanket of white in the sky. Turning a little bit gray. Full count, payoff pitch on the way. That catches a piece of Ward's bat. Yep, that will continue now. Surprised to even see her try and check a swing, even think about going at that rise ball. That was clearly ball four. Yeah. But Copeland gets another chance here to with a put-away pitch. Yeah, bring it a little bit back down, perhaps. The 3-2 payoff 
Maybe a little bit too far down there from Copeland. Issues her first walk of her appearance. And Megan Ward in the Fighting Illini leadoff batter on the first base bag. First walk Copeland has allowed. We mentioned how much she's been able to induce the swing and miss. Three strikeouts already in her outing. She's gotten five outs. Now how about this? Dangerous, dangerous, dangerous. And Kelly Riono coming up a single, double, and takes the first pitch for a ball. But this is a spot that the Hoosiers really, if they want to keep themselves in this game, they've got to get around Kelly Riono because she has been spotless so far today. She's been the best player in this series through a game and a half, and Indiana has to find a way to get her out of the plate right now. Two RBIs already responsible for why Illinois is in front, and it's her first time facing Copeland, so we'll see how differently she attacks Copeland's arm. She finds herself in a 1-2 count right now after fouling that one back into the netting. Kelly Riono puts her right toe in the dirt and steps back into the box. Now signaling bunt here, but pulls back and holds off on the swing. 2-2 two, two the count now. No way she's bunting right now with the way she's swinging the bat. I mean, that's just a way for her to maybe get a better look at her pitch, see if Copeland decides to throw something different. But eh. the 2-2 two, two swung on there and through to Lindsey Warwick for the out. So, you know, Brianna Copeland, the first one today who's been able to get past Kelly Riono. Now one down, still a runner on for the Fighting Illini. She's, fi to Lady Rummel. Go She's ahead. finally retired and, and Copeland gets her fourth strikeout here. Again, showing bunt and then able to swing through a pitch that was low and out of the zone. It was a good pitch sequence by Copeland uh, to get the hottest hitter in Illinois' lineup out for the first time today. You know, I love how at a lot of softball complexes, they have a rule where if you go collect the ball on a foul ball, you get a free candy or drink. That's, it always makes it very exciting as this one's fouled back into the net. When something lands on the concourse, there's always a bit of extra energy as a group of kids will always go run after it. Is that um, the case here at Andy is, Moore? It is indeed. I might leave the booth for half yeah. an inning, see if I can get lucky, and if I get two, I'll bring you something. Oh, thank you. You're too kind. There goes the runner from first to second. The throw out attempt from Warwick to Benson. Good. Look at Bella Loya and Lindsey Warwick for both these teams. So quick, just getting up out of their stands. Exactly. And just launching it to where they need it to be and just nailing the target right in the center. That's exactly what it is, Max. They're out of that kneel position and then able to get everything behind that throw. This one popped up high in the air. And Cora Bassett getting under it right near the first base bag. That will do it. Another eventful half inning here through four and a half so far. The fighting line I lead Indiana 2-0. We'll be right back for the bottom of the fifth on Big Ten Plus. And now a pinch runner in Tatum Hayes. And she is leading the Hoosiers in stolen bases and right there in the top three in the Big Ten in stolen bags. She's at number two right now, right behind Kami Megan from Maryland. 27 stolen bags, only been caught four times. 1-0 for Lorsung, there goes Tatum Hayes. Gets a good jump, but the tag gets right in front of her. And again, just a beautiful, beautiful toss there from Loya behind the plate. Wow. These catchers are putting on a show right now. She's already tripled in this ball game, so she's helped her cause offensively, and now completely erasing the leadoff single from Warwick with another laser of a throw to second base. Yep, and Grace Lorsung drops this one. That will land. She'll hold it first. Another little blooper that just gets through the glove, this time of Jalen Vickery. After this, yep, there it comes through for a strike. I mean, especially with the speed that Tatum Hayes had, she could have turned that into one more base too and had runners on the corners, but 
You know what, that's what a really talented catcher does for you, really changing the pace and the tone of the game. Brooke Benson with an 0-1 count at the plate with Grace Lorsung on at first. Benson holds on that, evening up the count at 1-1 one one with one down here in the bottom of the fifth. So we've seen pitchers warming in the bullpen, excuse me, yeah, in the bullpen for Illinois, but McQueen has still been able to limit the damage and still pitching a shutout here. 1-1 one, one to Benson. Benson holds on that, another strike, 1-2. One, one down yet, you're right. The Illini still holding on to a 2-0 lead. Hoosiers getting ready to turn the card over. We have one down here in the bottom of the fifth. 1-2 count to Brooke Benson. Pitch on the way from McQueen. Big swing there and another really good pitch there from McQueen. She gets a strikeout. Here Cora not only played softball in high school, but also soccer and track and field. Cora's parents and coaches say that her competitiveness and drive for the game are unmatched. Guys. Thanks for that, Gwen. Definitely seeing some of that track and field skills on the base path when she gets on. Ninth in stolen bases in the Big Ten. Pops this one up high in the air with two outs. And getting under it right there is Megan Ward, the shortstop for the Fighting Illini to strand one. Once again, we'll head to the top of the sixth. The Illini still holding on to a two nothing advantage here on Big Ten Plus. And Zach, through five, Tori McQueen has looked so strong in the circle. She really has, it's a great decision that was made by the coaching staff and Sean DeStanton to insert Copeland into this ball game throw a little more strikes than four was and induce the swing and miss a lot more. She's already gotten four strikeouts in her time on the mound here and now facing the bottom third of this Illini lineup trying to keep it at just a two nothing ball game. Yep, at the plate, Kylie, Kaylee Powell, excuse me, lining this one straight to the right side into the glove of Cora Bassett and over to first. The one out here. Here the wind starting to pick up out there. Still blowing from right to left, at times taking a turn a little bit out. Here's Loya, made an incredible play from behind the plate to pick off Hayes who was trying to steal the last half inning. Yep, first pitch to Loya is a strike. Wind blowing about, gusting at about 14 miles an hour here. That could potentially, if it continues to pick up, play a factor. Absolutely, you're gonna try and see some of these hitters, especially for Indiana, try and put the ball in the air, let the wind kind of drift a fly ball out of here. Possibly, Indiana only with the one extra base hit on the afternoon, that's where they make a lot of their money. 136 extra base hits on the season. 54 of those are home runs. 1-1 one, one to Loya, popped up into shallow right. And there's Bassett again. This time unassisted for the grab. Two down here in the top of the sixth. That'll bring up Danielle Davis here toward the back of this lineup, but no knock on Davis though. She's hitting 383 in 81 at bats. First pitch coming through, a strike. And to have that kind of a threat, I mentioned it earlier, at the bottom of your lineup, just a really nice part of this Illinois lineup, really nice dimension to it. And Davis actually struck out facing Copeland the last time up, so she was able to lessen that average a little bit more, but she's also a very patient hitter, walked her first time up back in the second. Count even at 1-1 after that one was just a little bit downstairs. Davis checks her swing. This time right in the heart of the zone for a strike. 1-2. Copeland has looked really strong, but I mean, on the other side of things, so is Tori McQueen looking fantastic out there. A really great pitching battle so far. Yes. All that's happened really in terms of scoring is this one's hit hard to center field. Aaliyah Andrews going back in, wow. reaching the glove up in the air to make the snag. 
That is unbelievable. Have a weekend, Aaliyah Andrews. Two diving grabs yesterday and just reaching the glove up in the air, picking it out. She never turns her head around to check where the wall is before the gloves in or before the ball is in her glove. It she makes the catch and then quickly turns around to see where that wall is to protect herself. But what winging at the first pitch she sees here in the bottom of the sixth. 0-1, starting off in this bottom of the sixth inning with the two slot. And three and four in Brittany Ford and Grayson Radcliffe do up next. 0-1 for Minnick at the plate. Tori McQueen continuing a great outing, this time coming across away from Taylor Minnick. I mean, she's in prime position, Max, to pitch her second straight, possibly her seventh complete game of the season. This one in shutout fashion, she has given up four hits, but her defense has really helped her out on that end of things, and she pe paints the corner for strike two. She really has been dominant and in position to pitch another complete game here, but Indiana running out of time here. Again, it's a slim lead, but the way McQueen's pitching seems like a lot more. Yeah, that one not liking the call by Shonda Stanton there, or the call, excuse me, not like. Let me try this again. The uh, English not working too well right now. Shonda Stanton, the head coach for Indiana, not liking the call behind the plate by Kelly Turns a few pitches ago. Now the count all even at 2-2. Two -two. It's been a pretty well-called game behind the plate by Kelly Turns, even on both sides of things. 2-2 two -two. coming across. Minix swings hard at this one. It'll be popped up and foul out of play. Minix made contact every time up, as we see. Two ground outs for her so far. So been able to see the ball relatively well off of McQueen, able to make contact every single time, just unable to get it between the infield. The 2-2 on the way from McQueen to Minix, swung on hard, popped up high, but very shallow infield. Straight into the glove of Avery Steiner. Plays. Indiana's base running has been neutralized a lot because of Loya behind the plate. So it's been an all-out defensive showcase for Illinois in every aspect of the game. And for Indiana right now, the goal has to just to be get on base and put yourself in a position to tie the ball game with a long ball. First pitch to Ford inside. 1-0 count with one down here in the bottom of the sixth. Ford gets a piece of this one again, just weakly hit yep. into the right side of the infield, out number two. Two straight pop-ups, two straight times the hitters have gotten and swung and gotten the ball completely under their bat, or completely the bat under the ball, excuse me. I mean, if you're this Illinois infield, you can't ask for anything more from in terms of contact from your pitcher to the hitter. Just popped up, slowly not moving much, doesn't catch the wind at all. It's been routine stuff in this half inning, that's for sure. First pitch to Grayson Radcliffe over the plate for a strike. 0-1-2 oh, down here in the bottom of the sixth. Hoosiers running out of opportunities here to put some runs on the board. We'll have just four more outs to work with here. 0-1, check swing there from Radcliffe, but it's over the plate again for another strike. 0-2, two down here in the bottom of the sixth. The Illini leading 2-0 over Indiana here on senior day at Andy Moore. Grayson Radcliffe, one of those seniors, trying to turn things around in an 0-2 hole right now. That one upstairs, 1-2. Max, I got a number for you. All right. When holding opponents to five runs or less, Indiana is 22-1, and one, and the one loss was at Florida State, a top team in the country. And they're in position here to suffer possibly a, only a second loss this entire season with an opponent scoring five runs or less. This one popped up again by Grayson Radcliffe. That'll drift out of play and into the hands of an Indiana fan down great there. Catch. Great catch. Gets it in the bare hands. Got to make that handoff to the, to the kid. And yep. She can keep it. Do you exchange it for candy? I think you do. To okay. be honest, I've been up here for the whole year, so I have not had the opportunity to exchange for candy. Maybe down there she's talking to her pal there, seeing, hey.
we exchange this now? What do we exchange it for? Exactly. Always a mind game down there. 100%. Radcliffe waits on the 1 2. Just outside away, 2 2. Tough decisions happening down there for the fans. What to exchange it for, even tougher on the field. Whether or not to hold up on the swing or go. See that again here with the 2 2 on the way from McQueen to Radcliffe. Radcliffe holds, works all the way back from down 0-2 to a full count. This is the kind of discipline and experience that you just live for. Having a player like Grayson Radcliffe on your team can be a game changer here. Let's see what she can do with the 3-2 count. On the way from McQueen, look great all day. Radcliffe pops this one up to shallow infield right in the middle and McQueen gets it done again, baiting Grayson Radcliffe into some just weak contact once again. And we'll head to the top of the seventh with the Fighting Illini still holding on to that two nothing lead. They're working with this crew here, the Fighting Illini leading Indiana two nothing right now. They got those two runs all the way back in the top of the first and have held on a defensive battle, a pitching battle in the circle. As this one hit straight over the head of the shortstop. Berkmeyer going for two, a stand-up double for Paige Berkmeyer to lead off the top of the seventh inning. I was about to say, I mean, this had been an excellent showcase from both pitchers and both defenses, and the story for Indiana had been the insertion of Brianna Copeland into the circle and her ability to get three and two-thirds innings pitched, and that's only the second hit she's given up in that time and has really been excellent, so we'll see if she can get herself uh, in Indiana out of this jam now. Pinch runner coming in for the Fighting Illini. That's Gabby Robles in at second base. Robles came in yesterday as well in the first matchup to pinch run. No stats though yesterday. Robles. Now the top of the lineup, Avery Steiner taking the first pitch for a ball. Steiner made every out in the bottom of the sixth. Every catch over there at second base, so she did her own and has done her own with the bat and the glove. Two singles on the day. Again, a defensive and pitching showcase here in Andy Moore Field between the Fighting Illini and the Hoosiers. Indiana, we may have a pitching change here. Perhaps they may just continue to talk things over. You know, it, it really is gonna have to be up to Copeland now to get out of the toughest jam that she's been in. A runner in scoring position, no outs, and she makes an excellent play there. Sacrifice bunt laid down to advance Robles to third. Steiner out at first. One down here in the top of the seventh, but again, Robles advances over to third. The job gets a little tougher here with only one out, and that's why you have to focus on the hitter at the plate. You can't, there's obviously no possibility of a double play ball being hit on the infield, and you have to worry about getting her out at the plate. This one popped up that will stay in play. It was tough, it, it would have been right up against the netting. I could, have, I could see a little bit, Lorson tried her best. I think the ball might have even hit the netting yeah. and then Kareemed into her gloves. I think you're right there. Just came out of our view here in the booth behind the plate. Down the first base line, hidden by the Indiana dugout. So the count will be 0-1 for Stevie Mead at the plate. A bouncer straight to Copeland to throw over to first in time. And again, with a ball hit softly in the infield, that will hold Robles at third. It's still not an easy play though, as much as it wasn't a, a direct line drive hit to Copeland, but again, just the glove work. She's responsible for both outs in this half inning, and now just gets to absolutely only focus on Ward at the plate, as she's one out away from maintaining this two nothing deficit for Indiana, which is more than doable come the bottom of the seventh. One on count for Megan Ward in the box for the Fighting Illini. Trying to bring home her teammate, Gabby Robles. This one upstairs, 2-0 count. Ward 
has been hit by a pitch, walked, and she grounded out as well. 2-0. This one upstairs gets away from Warwick. The tag attempt there at the plate. Plenty of time, though, for Lindsay Warwick. She recovers quickly after it got away from her. And the Hoosiers strand the runner at third and head down to the bottom of the seventh with one more shot to tie this thing up or take the lead. Back in a moment for an hopefully exciting finish either way for both teams here on Big Ten Plus. And you know what? They do a, a baseball type move here, bringing in a closer, Sydney Sickles in the circle to try and finish things off. And she pitched a clean game towards the back half yesterday and gets a first pitch strike on Brianna Copeland there. You know, I, I understand the move, obviously. You mentioned how well she pitched, and now it's a chance for Indiana to at least see a different pitcher out there in the circle. And, and what a day it's been for, for Copeland in the circle and now in the batter's box. So a chance for her to do some work with the bat now after pitching a phenomenal four innings in relief. 0-2, Copeland smacks this one down the third base line. The throw over to first, in time, one down for Sydney Sickles. She was just so fantastic. I don't think I can say that enough yesterday. And it looks like the pitching coach, Lance McMahon, will talk things over with Sydney Sickles in the circle, and Bella Loya comes up from behind the plate. And Shonda Stanton's gonna speak with Leah Andrews right now just to go over there process at the plate. Sickles was obviously seen by the hitters yesterday. He's got his ace, Sidney Sickles, in the circle right now, trying to put a cap on this game. One out, first pitch to Andrews, swung on hard, but it just blows by her. Sickles feeling it already here. A one count to Aaliyah Andrews. The 0-1. Just inside. Yeah, it looked like a good pitch, too, and it was a good frame job from Loya. I don't know if I've seen Sydney Sickles yet this weekend miss badly at all. Sure. Kept everything really close to the zone. The 1 1 this time fouled back once again. 1 2 hole for Aaliyah Andrews with Lindsey Warwick due up. One out already. As the Fighting Illini lead Indiana 2 0, trying to extend their win streak to four games and keep right up there at the top of the Big Ten standings in the top three, trying to move to 14 and four. The one two to Andrews, this one hit hard down the first base line and coming over to try and make the grab. I believe that was Riono. Powell actually. Powell coming over from first to make the grab instead. And but it, it does drop. Couldn't quite get over there in time. So a one-two count still for Andrews at the plate. I mean, you think a foul ball is going down that far the right side, Riono should be the first one to react to it. But Powell tracked it down as much as she could and, and got the glove on it, but unable to bring it in for that second. stays alive to see another pitch. Yeah, the one-two upstairs on Andrews from Sickles. That'll even up the count at 2-2. Two -two. The 2-2 two -two on the way, Andrews fouls it back. A nice half bat here for Aaliyah Andrews, extending things on the strikeout ace, Sidney Sickles. So what you have to do, stay alive at the plate, put yourself in a position where you can be walked if you work the count full. And all we've seen from Indiana is weak contact, but if you can put something sharply on the ground. Andrews pops this one up high in the air to center. Getting under it is the center fielder, Robles, who will make the grab. And the Hoosiers are down to their last out. It's been close all day long, 2-0. Big swing there from Warwick on the first pitch from Sickles. Very fitting that she would be, at least for now, the last chance for Indiana. As great of a day as she had behind the plate, now a chance to make an impact with her bat here, but the Hoosiers are indeed down to their last life. This one bounced back into the netting once again, 0-2. Now the Hoosiers down to their last strike. 
And Sydney Sickles, that's what she does, pitches four strikeouts. Just four hits allowed by this Illini pitching staff. 0-2 oh, on the way. Just upstairs for a ball, 1-2. And a marvelous shutout effort. Team ERA is 2-6-1. That'll only go down. They only allow about three runs per game. Five and a half hits there under all those numbers. One, two on the way to Warwick. This one barely getting some contact there. We'll keep it at one and two. You know, the Finding Illini only hitting 292. That's much better than the Hoosiers 182 for today. But again, it still has been a decent defensive battle and battle in the circle. The one, two to Warwick, swung on and missed, and the Fighting Illini take a 2-0 victory on Senior Day here at Andy Moore. You know, and Zach, just starting off, as you were just mentioning there, a very complete effort in the circle from the Fighting Illini. One of the better performances this pitching staff has had, given what they're up against here coming on the road in Bloomington against an Indiana offense that had really been up and down, but as of late, uh, was winning and putting up more runs. They got four off of them yesterday, shut out today. And again, I want to reiterate, it's only the second time all season that Indiana has lost a game when they hold their opponents to five runs or less. This is usually an offense that comes up and supports their pitching staff as the seniors and the players. Salute the fans here in Bloomington in what was a hard-fought battle, but Illinois' first two runs in the first inning proved to be the difference.